Well, hey guys, today on the bench we have a Sony subwoofer. And this Sony subwoofer is a model number SAWCT290. So this is a 120 volt AC 15 watt subwoofer. It's an active subwoofer with the, um, the Bluetooth link. I'm not getting any lights. I don't know what's supposed to be in here, but it's plugged in and I'm not getting any kind of standby light here, whether it's supposed to be blue or, and then maybe go to a different color or maybe it blinks and then lights up solid once it connects. But either way, um, the owner of this is a friend of mine and said that it just doesn't have any power to it. So I'm going to unplug it and take uh, three, four, five, probably all 14 of these screws around the edge and the wood, I'm assuming has to come out. I, I doubt these do, but we'll see. I'm just gonna continue around taking these Phillips heads off and we'll be right back. So now that it's unplugged, that probably goes to the LED. It's probably a tricolor LED. And I'm assuming this goes to the subwoofer. Good thing we took this whole panel off, by the way, because we would have had to take the ribbon cables off. We could have took this plate off the metal plate without the plastic plate, but we would have to disconnect. So it's it's better to me just to leave them together here. Now I'm just gonna be careful here and plug it back up just so we can see here on video uh, what's going on. I'm gonna take a minute to adjust the camera a little closer here. Hey, back now, bring up my multimeter. And of course we need to check, make sure we got our AC coming in, but I'm, I'm gonna go straight to it and go to DC volts and carefully go across this cap that's it's probably got over 150 volts on it. And there we go, we had about 163 volts. So all the AC coming in is gonna be good. If we look here, it says we have our subwoofer ground going towards these black. And the way they're coming over, I would assume these three brown and these three black are probably all power coming over. I was expecting to see them closer to 24 volts, but it may be 20 volts coming over. So this board may be okay. It's a really quick way to look over that board. Don't have anything on them pads. I'm gonna look up this chip right quick. Cause that looks like a little converter chip with the, um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but we have a little inductor and some capacitors. So this chip is a 54334. So I'll give you a good, a good once over on the whole back panel here. So back now I have the data sheet, at least the first page printed out on the Texas Instruments 54334. It's a little step down voltage converter, which is exactly what we thought it might have been. We got a little typical simplified schematic of it here. Um, going through looking at this, going from what looks like pin one to ground, I'm actually getting 3.4 volts, so I don't think it's anything with that chip. I'm gonna keep looking around and see if I see anything else. I really wasn't having any luck. I thought I had checked out this little 54334 uh, step-down converter chip. I made a mistake looking at, looking at this simplified schematic, and I just checked across the chip, and I was getting some voltage. This really should have been up to 24 volts in. I didn't print the other page that showed the um the eight pin so package so if we get a closer look at this we see that i was actually checking across sense and boot bootstrap so our um vn should be across two and four so we should be getting a 3.3 volt output i'm assuming and this is what we have the reference on this is the package and this is the simplified schematic where this, in this example, it shows our 3.3 um, volts out and it shows the inductor and all in the circuit, which we got a very, very similar circuit here with these caps and the inductor. So you can see it's, uh, it's gonna be a very similar to this typical diagram here. So while we still got the power on, this should be ground on pin four and two should have our VN, which is about 18, 19 volts, yep. And switch here. Nothing. P good, nothing. 
getting something on an able. Comp and uh, these both cents. I am getting 3.3 volts on boot. There's a lot of information online that shows that this switching chip, this little step down or buck regulator chip is usually the primary cause of issues with this model. So I may go ahead and swap this chip out before we even go any further since this does affect the power and hopefully the standby power. And I'm not getting, um, I'm not getting anything on these pads here coming off, which should be either like a 3.3 volt or five volt bus. Without a schematic, it's very hard to know for sure. I don't have a schematic on these, of course. I'm gonna swap out this converter chip and we'll see how it goes. Using my little Bessie vise here to improvise on holding my digital microscope here. Sometimes without taking the board off, you just gotta do it to get over and up high enough to be able to work.
Okay guys, so back now, after this is dried, after cleaning, after we replaced the little step down of buck regulator chip, and that was one of the most challenging chips I've probably ever done because it's so small and it has the thermal pad on the bottom, so it took so much heat to get this off. So you saw that I taped up all around it to try not to blow the other components off. And so I got to clean this up with some alcohol a little bit more, starting to haze over again. Without the solder paste, I don't believe I could have done this chip. I just really don't. It would have been so difficult to do with the thermal pad under just a small footprint of the chip itself. Just a little 8-pin SO package uh, with the thermal pad on the bottom is very, very difficult. Looking on it with the microscope and even looking a little bit around the edges with my little handheld magnifying glass, it actually looks like all the pads are clear and good. So I'm going to plug it in. We'll do a voltage check. The fuse hasn't blown, so that's good. Just make sure that we still got our 20 volts. Yeah, we got our 18 volts. All right, drum roll. Do we have it on these pads here? Hey, we got 3.3 volts. So back now, we got our board hooked back up, our LEDs hooked up. Set this back in place. Plug it back in. Just gonna hold this back plate on here for now. And do we have a LED light? Yes, we do. We got a red light. What happens when I um, unplug it and plug it back in? We get a blinking green light when we first plug it in. So I guess it's trying to connect to the um, sound bar. We go red. Okay. If I cut it on, it goes to blinking green. If I hit, okay, I can turn it off. So this one has the power button on the um, Bluetooth module. <clears throat> and then we also have a link button, which I'm not going to touch because it may be linked to his. As soon as he gets it, it might link right back. So, well, guys, all over the internet, there is a lot of talk out there looking into it about this 54334 chip being a problem with these. So, more than likely, this is a very common issue with this 290 subwoofer. But I haven't found any information showing me exactly which chip and the right way to do it. I'm by no means an expert with the surface mount stuff. I'm still learning it. I've done through hole for years, but the last four or five years I've gotten more into surface mount. That by far is the toughest surface mount chip I have ever done. If you're having trouble with one like this as well, you might want to get a friend or um, a local shop that don't mind soldering on there for you. At least you know what part to buy. And they're, and they're relatively cheap. I got those for about three bucks a piece. I'll try to have a link in the description for the solder paste if you're interested in that. I'll also have some things on there, some tools and things that I like to use on my bench. And one of them is going to be the hot air, the, my Avon iron, Haco iron, and some other tools. So if you're interested in that, it'll be a, they'll be in the description as well. I'm just going to put these screws back in. But if you found this video today to be helpful, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.